<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. Today's date is October 22nd, 2018. Call to order at uh, 639. We are a little late because we were discussing <laughs> barbecue, <laughs> in the, barbecue in the corn maze. And we figured that we're going to make chili with cornbread. Now, the question is, do we put do we put chilies in our cornbread? Some people put corn in their cornbread, too. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. So we've been talking about the fine points of uh, making cornbread tonight. Yes. Then David threw out something about vinegar in his, or something in his cornbread. Vinegar it really screwed the whole conversation up, but... <laughs> That's what he does. He's been a heated debate. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <he's laughs> <been, laughs> no Scott votes. wants a setting on his grinder to be such a, to get the corn to a particular so, grist. Yeah. Yes. The, you have to have a particular <laughs> grist. So I was just looking for a good cornbread recipe, but yeah, it seems just like went we're all going way past that. You hear that, Janet? He wants Down your cornbread recipe. <laughs> Scott's cornbread. No, no Janet. No, I Janet's. thought. All right. I th yeah, I thought you had meat pie recipes. That's this recipes. Sunday. Ooh. Yeah, nice. this Sunday. Oh. That time of year. It sure is. Well, crucial element for well, you. Well, know is Henry I coming home to make it? Yes, he is. It's a family affair. Nice. See, Henry's got because a because Dad wouldn't give son recipe, but he would give the grandson the recipe. Bingo. Uh -huh. Go figure that one out. <laughs> Anyways, mm. the life of small town Sunderland. All right, 6.30, we have an appointment with Mr. Wisman. David, mm. you want to drink again down at the maze? Um, I, I actually, I can drink at the I've maze. never heard you started before, uh, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh -huh. Other folks want to come and drink at the maze. We have two other tasting events happening at the maze. Um, one on October 26th, um, which is another beer tasting, and one on November 2nd, which is a cider tasting, hard cider tasting. Wow. Um, the first one that we had this past Friday was a great success. People had a, had a very good time, and um, and yeah, we're gonna, we have tickets for this Friday. I just checked, they're all sold out, so um, it's been a successful little venture so far. So, Cher, we didn't hear any uh, concerns from neighbors no, or for cool. PD or fire department, anything? fire all set. Mm -hmm. David, looks like you're being a good corporate member of our community. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, okay, so you want to take up these requests individually, gentlemen, or you want to do it both at the same time? Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, preference would be the same time. They're, they're, they're applications. We have a standard form, and we have had public safety check off. We have liability insurances here for both events. We have the application fee for both events. Okay. Um, David, concerns, thoughts? You want to agree with Mr. Bertrand? Yep, I agree. I don't, I don't see what like breaking them up would really do anything. <clears throat> At this uh, time, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the 1026 uh, beer tasting and the 112 cider tasting. Okay. Licenses. We have a motion made for the two dates, the uh, 1026 and 112. Do I have a second? Uh, second. Those are both from 6 to 9 p.m. and they're both at uh, the Warner Farm. On South Main <clears throat> Street. South Main Street, correct. Anybody got anything to say from the audience? Concerns? Well, Sold out already. It's too late. Actually, I, have one, I have one question. I'm going to mention myself. It doesn't look like it'll be an issue for this Friday. Um, in theory, we have a rain date set for the it was the following Saturday night. So again, this Friday, it doesn't look like there's gonna be any weather issues. For the November 2nd one, you know, I don't know at this point, obviously. Okay. Hmm. I hadn't run into the issue so far. And, but so I you're doing your rain dates would be the following night? It would be the following night, essentially. You wanna amend your motion then? 
uh, and to include the rain dates uh, as the application sees, and these are within 24 hours of the original. Second. I like that. So I have a motion to accept the 26 and the uh, second, including would be within a 24 hour rain date if rain shall fall, but it'd only be one per week. Correct. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, we got three zero on that one. Do, yeah, do, just makes me wonder, do we need to put something on here? We're on the form, about that. On, the, on form our for form. That. Right. Yeah. If there's rain dates, so we can include them in the motion. Yeah, because these types of events usually, you know, are often outdoors, so. Yeah. The other, the other idea. The other thing with respect to rain dates is that if, if there is, this is this discussion, if there are rain dates and there are things like um, requests for details or some yes. kinds of coverage that helps with planning for department heads that may be affected. Yep. Yeah. Good. All right, anything else? David, I think we're all set. Thanks so much. Thank you Should very much. Back? Good luck. Thanks. Okay, next up on the agenda, Sarah Snyder wanted to come talk to us about uh, Riverside Park. Funny Riverside Park cool. update. Sarah? <laughs> have a lot of stuff to talk to you about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then we started early. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. um, so, um, yeah, first updates on Riverside Park. Um, we, the, the bids for the construction were opened on nice. Friday. Um, and we have um, a lowest bidder um, and we'd like to have you accept um, or start the process of, of um, a con creating a con contract with Taylor Davis. I want to bid to Taylor Davis. You have <coughs> Carlos's recommendation from Berkshire Design. Yeah. Where's that? Now, um, You're right in your right here. Yeah, yeah Carlos sent a recommendation. We we constructed. Of your binder. Oh. We set up the bid with uh, as a there's a base as a base bid with three alternates. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the prices for the first alternate were like way over our budget. That, yeah. <laughs> the far end of the spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Yeah. Oh, wait. So um, so we're just. We just want to accept the base bid right now and not the alternates, and um, we're just going to have to kind of revise our plans um, for the, the alternates subsequently. Sherry, what would we have uh, for funds available for this project? Uh, the total project amount? Mm -hmm. I didn't bring my spreadsheet with me, but we have way here. more. Than yeah, that. we have plenty of funds for, for our, the base bid. Our budget for the initial contract was two hundred fifty-two thousand, and it came in at two thirty-seven. So we have plenty for that. Already, already. Um, Plus, we had some CPA funds. Yeah, we have um, the park funds and the CPA funds. All right, so. So a lot of times we look for, we got Carlos is the uh, architect that, that says go ahead and award. And a lot of times we'd like to just see something in the future just that we have the available funds from the accountant to sign. Yeah, you know, he'll have, sign have the have Susan contract. Or, have Susan or you know the accountant or treasurer sign something that we have the, the, uh, the available funds, okay? He signs off on the contract saying that the funds are available. Just... Yeah. It is a reimbursement grant, so. Correct. Right, we pay it and then we get reimbursed, yeah. I remember you think, Scott? <clears throat> I appreciate the, from the decision-making piece, having them all, all laid out in front of us. I'm, I'm punching numbers in now, just for the sake of it. I do want to ask a question, if I could, Mr. Chair. Shoot. So as we talk about the alternates being um, more expensive than 
uh, originally anticipated. And I completely understand that. Sometimes that's scope. Sometimes that's reality. Sometimes it, it's it's there's people here who deal with contracts, municipal, you know, the way you're anyway in the room. So we all get it. But is it the intent of the project to exercise the alternates either in other fashions? And do we run the risk of coming back and asking for future funds for alternates approached in a different way? I think that's important to bear in mind. You know, we can, we can do a great job on a baseline project. And then the alternates come in and it's like, well, we kind of held that off at a little length and arm's length relationship and we waited a year and we put it back out and then now it's a new project. Well, maybe it was the original project with an alternate and how, how, do, we, how do we ensure that a, a bidder who's blank wherever in the range doesn't come back and go, wait a minute, you guys dinged the alternate out, you waited a year and I think I had that number. I've been in that position. I, I, I was just so before it, before it, I say I, I it was fracturing it was is what it used to be called and we don't try not to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah dovetailing, yeah, right, dovetailing. Um, for for me, I always I always put my alternates in reverse order. I I put my most affordable ones first first, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. then I work up to the right. big. These one. are the priorities, um, right, 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 right. And and I I just don't understand how, and and I guess you know when I look at your your the base alternates, you had thirty four, they were. More than all, all two and three right. combined. Right, I, I right. would have just done the other way because I right you. because yeah. in the the rules yep. of uh, competitive yeah. in bidding you have, you to, have to award all yeah. one right, all right, right. two. Right, you know you do your adults first yep. and and they have to be in order. You can't pick and choose your adults. Bingo. That I guess that maybe that's the crux of the decision. Uh, the crux of the point I was trying to make. The decision making moving forward about the alternates. Do they end up being carved out? left alone, and then in a year or two years, come back as a new project. And that, that becomes a bit of a challenge. As, as, the, as the authority, awarding authority, that becomes a challenge. Yeah, I agree with you, Scott. I, I, and again, I, I would just, typically that's how I would do it. I, I, do, I do know by the four, the four contractors here, I've worked with all four right. contractors. Solid, everybody. Yeah, I, I, I would give good <clears throat> recommendations on all yep. four. Um, so I would have no problems with any of them, Taylor Davis, Mass West, Warners, or, or Marion. They're very right. exceptional, exceptional contractors. I work with all of them. Yep. I, so must be doing something right. The right, right, the right people, the right people are, <laughs> right, the right people are getting the bids. Let's put that. And it's not an extraordinary range based on the kind of work that's laid out here. You know, you start talking about plus minus ten or twelve percent on this kind of a spread for that kind of a project. That's decent definition. Yeah. Right. People did their homework. You know, had anticipated or others. They're like, eh, did. anyway. That 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 culture is good stuff. Yeah. I I I would be. Yeah. If you had one here at two thirty seven and one at one point nine million, red flags everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. Quite a if you got something here that's between two thirty seven and essentially three ninety, you go. All right. That's that's solid. We can figure this out. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Um, as far as addressing the concerns that you brought up, I actually, I personally don't have a lot of experience dealing with these kind of contracts, but um, working closely with Sherry and Carlos, who both do have a lot of experience with them, and we're gonna um, we're gonna regroup and and work it out. We do have um, we do have more budget to work with, and um, Sherry and Carlos are both very aware of like what's kosher and legal and what isn't and relying on their knowledge and we'll come back to you obviously but we do have um, budget and we also um, the, the first alternate was for the the parking extension back here and after we had put the uh, project out to bid um, the State Department of Fish and Game, who uh, the, the the chief engineer who did the boat ramp improvements, yeah. said, "Oh, well, we'll we have we'll, we have some more budget for your project, and maybe we can help you extend the parking uh -huh. lot to um, make more um, trailer spaces. Like we were just going to add gravel, but he said, oh, well, why don't we like we can pave a little bit more so we can have complete three more complete trailer spaces back there.'" 
Oh, so that's interesting. Yeah, that's what we thought. We thought, okay. oh, this. <laughs> and he's an engineer. Um, he, he could um, work on the drainage issues, possibly, or you know. So, so there there are some new um, possible sources of. Um, yes, yeah, so we just need to well. regroup and yeah. figure yeah. out the construction window. The grant window is is not very big. We have yeah. everything done by June thirtieth. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. All of it. So All yeah. of it. complete project. So it's project closure by six thirty two thousand nineteen. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We good. We still have time. Right. Yeah, we still have time over the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. No. So I I, I I would just say that the the contractors are fine. I I. I I, I would say that, understanding what what Sky was saying, I would I would rework the alternates to uh, just to uh, make sure that we're not infringing on the mm -hmm. on the process. Right. Yeah, no. Right. 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 Okay. Anything else? Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> Should we vote on this? Yeah. You can make. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's do this so one get first. The right. Let's go. Uh, move, move to accept the base bid for uh, the project work uh, as presented from Taylor Davis Landscape Construction. This is a bid of two hundred thirty-seven thousand ninety-eight dollars. There are no alternates included in this. This is correct, right? Base bid. Right. Got it. And I want to thank the remaining bidders: Mass West uh, Construction, Warner Brothers LLC, and Marion Excavating for. Uh, both participating as well as being uh, competitive. I think that's really good stuff. Second. And motion made and seconded to accept the uh, base bid of Taylor Davis Landscaping and Construction out of Amherst for the work on the Suver Sunderland Riverside Park. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Sherry 3 0. Let Mr. Uh, Taylor know. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got one out of the or way. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one, right? Whichever one you can get, right? <laughs> um, okay, so now that we're, um, you know, we've got all our funding and the um, construction is moving along, starting to think about opening day for the park. Um, um, and since uh, the June 30th is the um, construction deadline, I was looking at um, July, um, doing having some kind of opening day ribbon cutting celebration. Um, probably July 12th, 13th weekend, just to be, because a lot of people are way around the 4th. Um, so just I just wanted to run that by you and see if you had any um, thoughts on that. We just missed the guy who has the beer one day licenses. He's <laughs> done, right? And cider and corn and agriculture. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> <laughs> I put in a cultural council grant application to have a band. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, but uh, just wanted to see, you know, uh, if you all had any. Hmm. Good idea, sure. I think 712 for a kickoff event makes a great deal of sense. Yeah. It really does. Sure. It's a good time to be angry. <clears throat> okay. And that'll be out. That so that that's a germinating seed right now, and it's gonna it's gonna come together as right. as we get through winter and into spring. Yes, exactly. Got I just it. wanted to kind of just start start yep. the germination yeah. process. Great, Park Fest 2019. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> River Park Fest. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, okay, great. And um, okay, next item is I just want to update you about our work with U.S. Fish and Wildlife on the um, invasives mm -hmm. um, along the bank. They've actually come out four times um, uh, to work on the invasives, mm -hmm. um, twice focusing on the knotweed mm -hmm. and twice on the bittersweet. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, the, their expert was a little concerned that once we removed the invasives, there would be nothing left. <laughs> well, there was something you said about the about the root structure that bittersweet, sadly, I'm so excuse me, not wheat. I don't mean to misspeak. Affords it is it is a, an aggressive infrastructure. Oh my God. Underground. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, this yeah. this dovetails into the cemetery piece. We're talking about this as well, and it's like one of the trustees, Retley So, says, bank stability. Not weed. It does a good job. Unfortunately, it's also mm -hmm. really good at being invasive. Right. 
Right. That's why they introduced it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn Brits. <laughs> yeah, well, Spreading some of the bittersweet uh, things we removed were like this big yeah. around. And they're down there, down there. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, so uh, anyway, we're, you know, working with that team on, on you know, the sort of thinking about, well, are we going to need to do restoration? Um, and, and so just one. We're, we're just kind of, we've got, they're on it. You know, we've mm -hmm. got a 10-year partnership with them, and they're supporting us. And so we're kind of just sort of waiting and seeing. This year, uh, a lot of um, jewelweed moved in where yep. that weed had been. And yep. that, was, that was fine. Yep. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of see. We're going to just, we're watching it. It's an Something. ongoing process. Yeah. Admission. yeah. If I, if I could, Mr. Chair, we, the cemetery trustees just adopted a plan using a landscape architect from Northampton, uh, Martha Lyons, who has been very creative about what to do with uh, original indigenous species that are bank stable, that are low ground cover. So um, Martha Lyons out of Northampton, okay. landscape architect, who's done a lot of this kind of restoration and historical work in and around uh, all of the Northeast. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Not an endorsement, just saying. Yeah, no, a good, but a good resource. So we'll look Correct. That. Um, okay, so um, now while we were working on the trail, <clears throat> we saw a fresh, new, very large pile of yard waste dumped How fun. in the uh, woods there, um, and um, that really can't happen anymore. We're besting so much in, in cleaning up the trail and um, and making it, you know, a public space. And so um, I know last year I talked with the um, Sunderland Youth Baseball people about their, you know, um, waste, yard waste, and they're aware that, you know, it's it can't be dumped on the dumped around there anymore but so I'm not sure where it's coming from but I'm just wondering what can be done to um, keep that from happening in the future Probably signage and uh, you know I, I mean I don't think anybody's traveling from a distance to come yeah. out and put so it has to be Great. local mm -hmm. yeah. so maybe just a mailing to this uh, or a, a code red, start with a code red just to do this. Remind uh, people. You know, with, with what, maybe a thousand foot radius, not even. I mean, is it because it's coming from, I would say it's going to be nearby, so. Mm -hmm. well, we, would, we, we, are, we are introducing with the boat ramp and a park a, a, a more transient, a more welcoming experience for people seeking it out. And that's important to bear in mind. That's where signage can come in. Yeah, signage. signage. Yep, signage, I just think. And game camera. I, I, <laughs> I was going to say, if it doesn't work, then we put well, a little I, wild, I would, a Wi-Fi camera in there. I, I would say, I would say. <laughs> exactly. The, 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 code red, the code red call will do two things. A, it would it just re reaffirm the um, uh, importance of not dumping yard waste along the river mm -hmm. any longer, but on this, in this at the same time, it would heighten awareness if someone sees someone coming in right. to give a, a quick call to the town office or the, the police, police or whatever, right. Right. so that they so that we can be properly. So it actually it would do two things. Right. Well, I agree. And you get the third benefit of sort of an indirect advertising for the park too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to maintain it, and in, in, and in signage, you know, we'd have to probably look at some point doing signage. We can talk to George if it continues, but... Yeah, um, what kind of signage would you... I, my sense is the people, whoever's putting it there probably knows they're, it, it's not supposed to be That's a safe there. Bet. So I don't know if a sign would make a difference if they already know that it's not supposed That's to That's where the game camera comes in. <laughs> right. It's, I, it's, I would it's, I, I would say the the if the the message the message goes out um, I, I and typically just most of the time just a message going out is enough to dissuade people from yeah. continuing. Yeah. 
So we'll start with that. Typically. So when the southern section, uh, when the southern section of the cemetery was cleared off via state grant in the 1995, 96, maybe 96, 97, it took four years before people finally stopped dumping leaf waste down there. Right. Right. What happens? Oh, I agree. It happened. No doubt in my mind. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> we saw you. <laughs> Big yeah, so but the, it, that that took time and it took conditioning of the human element right mm. because given the opportunity people would largely do the stupidest possible thing <laughs> right. I say that with every bit of conviction <laughs> and the easiest thing um, is there a place to, to dump the arc waste no. the highway department absolutely no. not yeah. no Closed, done, shut down, no more, end of discussion. No. <laughs> people, I, I should know this answer this. Can they bring it to Greenfield? Is there a place? Yes. So you can yeah. put it in and you can drive it up there. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, ready for the next question? So the, this on um, to the topic of the donation policy. Um, the last time you um, took that up, I was, unfortunately it was mixed signals and I hadn't had a chance to review it. Um, so I've submitted some changes to try to make it more um, legible to the layperson. I think the lawyer, um, you know, kind of, I, I don't, I. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Legal leads. yeah, somebody yeah. who doesn't have a law degree should be able to read it. Exactly, so I, I, I try to do that, and the other um, substantive change. So it just it was just sort of simplifying it a little and making it more intelligible. Um, but the other thing is, um, as far as the committee goes, we um, after some discussion with Sherry, we thought um, we should add um, a library. Um, somebody oh, representing a library to the committee, and then some somebody at large. So maybe somebody from the neighborhood could oh, be that's a involved. Good idea. Um, yeah. So I, so we added um, two members to the committee. I think the library folks will be an important stakeholder given the proximity and everything. Yeah, yep. that makes Plus sense. Plus, they have so much experience organizationally, so they they'd be good advisors. Yep. I don't have a problem with the uh, the group that you've put together. I just know that uh, a lot of times the um, the group that's put together, conservation, recreation, community pathways, youth baseball, volleyball club, public library, they're typically they're busy to begin with. Right. So, so now you're headed there. Yeah. Now, now you're, you're adding um, another thing, and some sometimes it's tough to get. You know, like on the conservation, it it it's tough to, and it seems like the recreation is the same thing. Is every time, almost every group of committees that we put together, we always put a member of the conservation and the rec committee on it. So. I mean, it, it does become onerous to that. So I don't know how you how you do it differently, though. Agreed. And um, actually, we talked about like not making a new a committee, but <laughs> when I started looking at the donation puzzle, like how could we possibly rework this and by and not have a committee? It it, it became kind of awkward. Oh, I agree. And like I think it wouldn't have to meet really often, but we do need to have coordination now between these 
uh, players, you know, the, the different stakeholders in that right. space. Maybe we need like a full on parks and rec committee kind of thing or something that encompasses all of it. Right. Something to think about. Do you, do you think that incorporating the list that we have right here, I understand by proximity their stakeholders, but they may not have a vested interest. The library? Well, I'm picking right down the list. Oh. Ba baseball, anyway. after baseball season's over, are they really going to be caring about the park? Right? That's, that's a valid right? point. Pathways Committee makes sense. Been very, very passionate about it. Volleyball Club. Uh, again, there's a season there, and there's. Uh, and don't get me wrong. There are, there are uh, soft impacts that are associated with decisions that someone associated governing the park in this in the context of a donation policy. But in in in, in my mind, these are um, collateral. Interests yeah. as opposed to a focused interest right. and limited too. Like so, if you had a focused interest in in the governance of the Riverside Parkway, whoever is managing that focused interest, who's passionate about that piece, how it's run, how we accept donations, they would be by by not just by charge, but also by their business model, would be reaching out to abutting neighbors. Mm -hmm. They're not on here, right? right? agencies or associations that are use and are affected by those decisions. I think that I would I would put forward that by including this kind of a diversity that it actually dilutes the focus mm -hmm. and becomes a little bit well how does this affect me versus what's the larger vision of the walkway around the park around the maintenance of it about the seasonality of it or about events around it more so than uh, including them. Yeah. Just saying, it, it can become unruly trying to include everyone. It's nice, but yeah. you know they might well be affected by something that Dan and Sarah decide. But Dan and Sarah worked really hard, and they're very passionate about it. I'm, I'm using your names, uh, and and they're 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 appointed by or elected by whatever the construct is. I think it's appointed by, and that's fine. But their focus is around that space mm -hmm. and what it means. And I think the focus, especially early on, is going to be really important. You know, you get something that's new, it's shiny. People like to be involved in it, and then when it's not so shiny. Eh, I don't want to be so much involved in it. Like two years later, when right. you're worried about the ongoing. So again, there's a collateral impact. You know, I understand that completely, but I'm not entirely sure having a group that's that diverse isn't going to be as focused on the benefits, the pluses, the accentuations, the growing of it, not by land mass, but how do we enhance it? Mm -hmm. Versus saying, well, yeah, it, it bugs me in my schedule. Eh, I'm a no. Find out just by quorums. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you, yeah, exactly. No, you may find that's a great point. You may simply find out yeah, right. by quorums. Third meeting with no quorum is like, ugh. Yeah, did we right. over? Did we over? Did we overthink it? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, what would you suggest? I'm. 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 I think. The, I think David's suggestion is well, uh, well made. I think you should. We should. We probably need to combine our recreation and our mm -hmm. park and put mm -hmm. them together. Like yeah, I think, like David was suggesting. Right. I think it's a. Good, I think David has a very yep. good idea. Agreed. And and because I, I I think from the earliest formation of the rec committee, there's all or there's always been. It shouldn't just be concerned with youth. Um, activities right, and, and not saying it's right. a bad thing no, no. um but um but maybe maybe we are starting to outgrow that and and, and then for a long time mm -hmm. for a long time um our rec director was absolutely inundated with with running like uh, the soccer and the yeah, um, basketball program because there were so many yeah, teams right. Um, right now, we're in a down cycle with our, you, know, you can look at the populations of the schools, et cetera. Um, maybe, maybe it's time to, re, to look at how we formulate the rec committee, and maybe it should be a park and rec. I mean, that's, 
I mean, I think that's a natural yeah. combination. If, if, to, to, to add on to that, Mr. Chair, we know in the office how much comment we get back seasonally yeah. about landscaping for different mm -hmm. recreational uses. That could easily be involved in, on the park side of right. park and rec. Because right. it's right? essentially so again, the parks. It, it, there's a lot of what you're saying has um, has real value about the growth that's happened in types of use. It's not just it's not just uh, youth athletics any longer. There's a lot that goes on, in particular at, at the library, the programs that are there. You're not hoping in a riverside or riverway park, outside of the boat launch, to incorporate a lot of youthful athletic activities. We're talking about a walking circuit for an aging population. Where you know right. that's a very different or view. Or like dog walking, and then I right. think the volleyball is uh, uh, not not young children. Correct. So. So you're absolutely right. So maybe we have to go and, and, and mm -hmm. well, to tell you the truth, I'd love someone to put on a uh, drone flying class. Yeah. I can repair my drone pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I should take, maybe I should take a class on so how you to don't fly have the to drone. Get it. Yeah. Right. 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 You know, these ordering parts uh, from China are getting very expensive. Yeah. Because <laughs> by the time I get the parts, I forgot <laughs> what I have to do to fix it. Again, again, on, on subject, while you're thinking about drones over the smokehouse, you know, uh, the reality is that we are often uh, several times a year asked about use of the ser of use of services and the lands. And when that park gets gets built, it could turn into something even more complex. Well, that's true. So yeah, back, back to David's point. Wow. I tend to agree. Oh, wow. and and I would, and, and and that's that's kind of where you were headed. Well, I was thinking because mm -hmm. because if you think about well, who who you know who schedules the fields, right. who right. Right. who yep. maintains a field, yep. who sets a budget, does all and, these and, things. And there's, yep. there's all these questions. So so Sarah, I think maybe you tweak something that's a bigger thing than just the original donation policy. Yeah, maybe. Right. Maybe Congratulations, new <laughs> director. So, so <laughs> what, what get your T-shirt. What, what I think we what we should do is maybe we can have um, one one of us. Dave, David Pierce has volunteered. Dave, Pierce, <laughs> Sarah Dan, and Sarah Dan and Sherry look look at putting together um, maybe go some more of the park and rec, and and Scott Scott's points are well taken about. What he said earlier, mm -hmm. and that's why I think David David's suggestion is pretty good. Yep. And I think maybe the, maybe you can come up with a thing and and talk to Jimmy and bring you know bring Absolutely. Jimmy bring Jim Jimmy in at the same time, and and maybe we can we can diversify our rec to to a little bit and at the same time pick up the parks and we can start looking at the management of the fields Correct. that really haven't done for a while. Yep. Yeah. Um. And. But that would include the fields on at the school also. Sure would. We can work with Ben on that's those. Right. So that's good. I think it's a good, good discussion. Thank you, sir. David, mm -hmm. good, good idea. Good Thanks. thoughts. So how's that? We we that's, put that's good. And then maybe um, we could do an in something interim on this donation policy, just so we mm -hmm. in case somebody so wanted to donate why, a bench why or. A, so why, why don't now we just put the the board in the uh, pathways committee? Okay. Would, mm, that's true. For, okay. for right now. For, okay. Right. Right. You know. And we may find that parks and rec turns into a bylaw, might require a town meeting vote, and yeah. all, yeah. all those true. things all as this thread as this thread unrolls. And okay. you know, we're we're presented we're presented with an opportunity for all of the best possible reasons, use, right? Types of use, land mass. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I think right. that's it a natural, is. natural, natural extension from the Pathways Committee. Any, okay. anyway. So if we could change that part of the donation to under B. The, yeah. So the motion. So, yeah, let's do it by motion. We would can be vote to on amend it. the yeah. overseeing body shall be the Board of Selectmen in consultation with the Community Pathways Committee. Yeah, for right now. I mean, because we're charged, we're charged with. Acceptance of donations, anyway. So we would ask, we'd ask the Pathways Committee what to do. Uh, I'd accept, I'd, I'd propose the adoption of the Sunderland uh, Riverside Park donation policy based on on that uh, modification under B, the governing body. Again, recognizing this as interim while we go about the exploration and the creation of uh, Parks and Rec. For, yeah, Parks yeah. and Rec. 
Uh, you like that? Second. Yeah, that yeah, could be good. All right, we have a motion made and seconded um, to accept the Riverside Park donation policy yeah. as amended in Section B. Right. Correct. All those, any further discussion? No. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're moving right through it, Sarah. What up? What's next? <laughs> I have two more things and they're shorter. They're not going to I gonna, told you I we're hope. moving right <laughs> I think they should be. Okay. Um, and these, these are not, these are separate from the park. Um, on park. The, the broader pathways committee, going back to our, our inception, we're working, we're getting back to the town trail map. Mm -hmm. Like, so mm -hmm. creating a, a map of the the trail map for the whole town so that integrating the town with Mount Toby yep. um, so people can really get a sense of how they can kind of flow from, like from where the can town I hike to in the town. mountain yeah. yeah and and around town where what are the lengths of trails and so on and then there would be an inset of or you know closer up of the center area mm -hmm. that's got more of the features of you know where they're where they're more concentrated yeah. um, so we're working on that we're in discussion with for cog and designers and we've got our gis apps nice <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, the, fur, the fur cogs work on that right the gis with you yeah, they, well we're talking with them we're still they're still working on the scope of the project and stuff so i remember from my concom days too we did a lot of mount toby maps yeah there. so there's right. definitely stuff you can yeah yeah, yeah. Take from there and incorporate it yep. yeah it's just the it's question good. of pulling it all together um so, but, but the, it brings up the question about how to um, uh, incorporate the businesses or whether to incorporate businesses. So I just want to check with you and see, is, the, is there any process around the town working with the businesses and, um, you know, do you have any suggestions about how we should, you know, conduct outreach to the businesses and see whether they want to be like map sponsors or yeah we don't want ads because that would be you know but we could put on the map mm -hmm. uh like businesses. mark the businesses yeah mm. like mike's maze you know and mm. the, and um uh so just wanted to see you know if the, if in other facets of town administration if there was anything any kind of mm. work going on with businesses and how you could do that, and then maybe those businesses want to put a little map holder in there with some of the maps or something mm -hmm. too down the road. Mm -hmm. So is this something Google does already? Probably. If I just go like this? Yeah, probably. Just ask it, right? There's pins all over the place. I want right. breakfast, I go like this. I go just right. like that, and that happens. Right. So should we just not even bother? I, I don't know. I'm asking. I don't, I don't I mean to be pushing back on it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. so we want to get involved in something that's got to be flexible and has time around it. And, right. and his, his businesses do come and go. I get it. Right. Right. So we're, we're, we're fortunate to have a 50-year business over at Sugarloaf Frosty. That doesn't mean they're going to be a 200-year business. Right. Right. So I, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Now, mapping, I totally get, understand it. Especially the walking trails, things that are maintained, things that we want to, you know, encourage people who are interested in that kind of walking, that recreational element of it. Mm -hmm. But if they need coffee, they probably carry one of those. Right, okay, good point. So is this a print um, We would, I, we're, we're talking about whether to print it or not. We definitely would have a um, digital version. Something, yeah. 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 Um, and just we haven't priced out and you know gone through the whole process. I, I think it would be good to have printed map like because when Agreed. you're hiking on Mount Toby, it's, yep. it's I, I it's think nice. I no think on required. right exactly Mount Toby the uh, conservation commission has has mapping mm -hmm. as well as and they were printed. Yep. Have, have, yeah, you, yeah, have you tried to use couple. that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's well, not usually so I just let the yeah. dogs go when I <laughs> they, they hate me. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, skills I'm actually kind of, kind of maybe. You know, I'm actually kind of back. with you on that, Sarah. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, an effort to yeah. use that. Yeah. You know, better trail markings would help. Yeah, and well, there's that yes. too, right? Yeah. Well, they, they actually, somebody went blazing trails Somebody does maintain recently. them. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure who. I think. Somebody at UMass. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say because. I think through the concom, didn't we have people at UMass? 
to trail maintenance it, because they have the forestry management too. Right. So they kind of do some of that too. A good aerial photo yeah. makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So is is this, if I could, Mr. Chair, is this the kind of thing, Sarah, where a, a you know a, a whiteboard and well, what are we looking to do? Right? Mm -hmm. what, what do we want out of it? How do we integrate this? And it turns into a list of six or seven items or 10 items mm -hmm. and then is refined down by, and then it becomes actionable, mm -hmm. right? Versus, versus how we go about creating a, a sense of inclusion or I'm not quite sure we're driving at with respect to integrating the walkways, the pathways area in town, as well as the more rural rec stuff. Because mm -hmm. you know, we, I can hop on, we've all done it. I'm sure everybody in the room's done it. We hop on Toby and we end up in Leverett. <laughs> <laughs> not getting coffee in Leverett today. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get back to my car. Yeah. But you know, the map is good. At well, least by the time the sun goes down, right? I, I know I was up with my dogs one day, mm -hmm. and it was just before a major blizzard. And you have sled dogs, you don't worry about blizzards and stuff. And I was following this uh, two sets of footprints. Mm -hmm. I started at the, the over uh, from Reservation Road, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I followed these, and I, I found, it was a, 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 a gentleman and his son, six-year-old mm -hmm. son, I found him on the other side of Green Swamp. Nice. And the guy says, how much farther is it to the top of Mount Toby? <laughs> it's a long way. I said, it's about five miles. Right, right. He says, we've been walking all day. I said, yeah, and you got to go five miles the Bad way that. you come. <laughs> right. and, and he was totally and he was totally lost. Um, mm. So I gave him and his son a ride back. But, yeah, you, the, the yeah. trails are... You have to. But I, I would, I also think that it's a tough sale to get people sale to get people from Sunderland to to learn what's in their backyard. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's case, good point. case in point, um, I've, I've been on that mountain a lot, and, and I can probably say pretty easily that there's not too many people I've recognized walking on those trails. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for if you canoe or kayak on mm -hmm. the river down here. Right. There's there's very few people from Sunderland, but I've met people from all over the United States that, <laughs> yeah, come, that come, come to this because right. they heard it's such a great place, right. especially this yeah. time of year, it's such a great place to canoe because it's, it's, you don't have... The, the they have boat. a yeah. well. They have a speed limit on the river. Yeah. They don't allow jet skis. The, you know theoretically, mm -hmm. so it's That's a it. very quiet, a very quiet, pristine area of the river, and very few people take advantage of it. So, so I I wholeheartedly support that because I I Mount Toby is a um, in that area. It is easy to end up in Leverett. Um, <laughs> That being said, it is a gorgeous spot, and you can go up there and never cross the same. You you could hike up there all weekend and not not run across the same trail twice. So. That's true. Yeah. It's a, it is a gorgeous area. Same thing for the river. That's why I'm, that that boat ramp is such a beautiful yeah. thing. Nice I hope addition. I hope it really develops into. Okay. One Check. One <laughs> <laughs> last thing on a completely different topic. And um, hopefully this will be very, very short. Um, My feeling is it's going to be tied into pathway somewhere. No, it's not at all. This is, oh. it's not at all. This is a planning board thing um, that we're working with um, um, Alyssa LaRose from FERCOG on some, uh, you know, changes to, on housing, mm -hmm. inclusive, inclusionary housing yep. issues. And she brought up the idea of creating an affordable housing trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, in town, and she said there's some actually somebody at um, what's, it, what's it called? Ma Mass Housing. M Mass Housing Partnership, who we worked with before, who um, is her whole mission in life is to help towns create affordable housing trusts. And I, um, I just wanted to kind of put this idea in the pipeline because. When I um, was working on the housing committee, I remember that um, a big issue we had was that there was no, we had no land to work with, and we had absolutely no agility. So there were parcels that came up for auction that were on town sewer, you know, near bus stops, um, and um, they got auctioned off, um, and we had no opportunity to try to get them because. 
um, we didn't have funds readily accessible. Right. We have the CPA, but to get CPA funds, you have to go through this go to long process. We only meet once a year to, to um, review um, proposals. So if the town were to create an, a housing trust, we could start putting CPA funds in there, and then when an opportunity arose, we could act on it very quickly. Um, so just I just wanted to kind of move that idea along. Gives us another tool in the housing yeah. Exactly. Like Unfortunately, it requires creating another uh, committee. Another committee. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Shocking. Um, but um, it would. The, I think the committee would only have to meet, you know, at just hockey, occasionally. But, yeah, just to if an opportunity arose. Yep. So. Um, and Sherry's got all the information. About yeah, it. I've been researching it. You have a um, packet of information there. It would require how we have we have homework. Yeah. 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 And right now it's about twenty nine pages worth of homework. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, I think the the concept is solid and it's worth exploring. And you get ringing endorsements from places like the town of Westford. You go, well, all right. <laughs> Leverett right. actually has yeah. one. Leverett has one. Yeah. I'll reach out yeah. to the Margie and get the Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's left for me. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. And keep up the good work. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Is that it? I think so, right? Yeah. All right. Um, minutes from 10 9. Okay, there they are. Make a motion on those. What's that? I'll make a motion on that. No. A motion made? I'll second. We have motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of 10-9 uh, as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We got 3-0 on that one, Sherry. Uh, Board of Selectmen, North Main Street Reconstruction Update. All right, where we stand, Sherry? Um, <laughs> so Kim Sloan uh, from MassDOT called last week and um, they have reviewed the options, talked to Dan, and she said at this time, um, the only options that they would entertain are the original design that was submitted or the option three that was presented. She did say that the um, town could um, look at doing uh, a road resurfacing project using chapter 90 funds um, if we were so inclined but at this time after talking with district two the only um, things that they would be considering are the original design submission 25 percent in the 10 foot lanes and five foot shoulders for bicycle accommodation you saw that well i didn't catch all that from i didn't i didn't piece all it together from the email disappointing okay David Scott what do you think so the, cor the correspondence here from Rich Massey you guys talk to Rich Massey? I, well, I talked to him about this, but just options for yeah. going for who's attending the show. Yeah. And, then, and then, is it Kimberly Sloan is the other one? Yep. And her correspondence is 1017? Right. 10 foot lanes, 5 foot shoulders. As the, far as the sidewalks require the town to put back, we're existing. So it's basically, I think what the, she's saying is 30 foot, 30 foot width, five foot sidewalks, or you can do the shed use. That's it. That's it. But they haven't, I'll just say that they haven't formally looked at what we prepared Proposal. at all. So I'm a little okay. disappointed they don't even want to go through that motion. At least we could give it to CHA yeah. and then look at it, see what they think. I mean, it just, it's a little cart before the horse. So we spend all this time, we do all this work. I, I think it makes sense to at least move it. So I know, I know what time is of the essence, and you guys. Can be, so, I 
so I'm hearing Dan, if I could, Mr. Chair, is you want to submit the request for the ex design exceptions? Well, we could, we prepared the draft. Yep. It has to go yep. to CHA and the no hotel. Oh, see it? We got it right here. Okay. And Sherry, that's the last one that I sent after the answer. Yep. Just for a recap for folks who are watching too, sure. like, yeah. what, like just like encapsulate like what, what's what in, was in what's that? In yeah, that? Just it's basically a hybrid. Um, it, it's just within the village uh, from basically Demos to North Silver to do single direction shared use sidewalks mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, on each side. Uh, just for the folks who are timid that don't want to ride on the roadway, mm -hmm. they can use the sidewalk and then you'll have entrances and exits on either end to come back and then at North Shoulder the road would widen to 30 feet. In, in, in part because we only, we're only going to have the sidewalk on the, we're asking for an exception to only have the sidewalk on the on the river side or on the west side, north of there and that will extend all the way to Claywood. So it's a, it's a kind of a hybrid option that kind of, I think, incorporates what we all want to see. So you have, you have, looking at uh, streets, Complete street, complete street projects. Have you have do you have other examples of this being used? I can't. No, I mean it's not. It's not. It's not something you see a lot. They typically push it towards the two by direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shared use. So I get. I get a question. Sure. I have. I drive a Chevy truck. Hmm. From mirror tip to mirror tip. Do you know how wide that is? Can I? It's eight and a half nine, feet. Eight and a half, nine feet. I measure it. I measure it's eight and a half feet. That's yeah. just a regular. That's not a, a big, big regular. Either, right? My regular so. truck that I drive. Okay, yeah. it's, it's it's eight <coughs> and a half feet wide. Some, and I, I I actually measured North Main Street by um, just up the street from the Button Ball today. Sure. I got a question. A ten foot travel lane. Mm -hmm. Okay, my tr and in a three foot bicycle lane, my truck is it's a standard truck is eight foot six inches. That means I'm going to have nine inches between the lines. I'm 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 piloting my truck down a nine inch side corridor. That almost I I think that's almost impossible. I wouldn't say. I mean, the, 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 this type of lanes all over the country. People use them, they navigate them, they drive more slowly when they're in them. Well, you, when we go with a three foot shoulder or a five foot shoulder, I think the shared use cap, uh, honestly, if you listen to the public meetings we've had, is kind of out. So it's the a thing that was submitted that she agrees to the 10 foot lanes with the five foot shoulders. No one's really seen in writing the 10 foot lanes with the three foot shoulders. So, regardless, it's a 10 foot lane. I know. I, I shared shoulder. I, I I thought at one time we were talking, we were talking eleven foot lanes with a design ex, design exception of eleven foot bike path to in, end up being a thirty foot path. And and I I thought I mean 11, eleven and four eleven and four, four. right okay, so that'd be that would be eleven and four so that would be a thir the thirty foot width. And the reason is is that you you put. Come, we we have the the town of Sunderland has has almost four hundred thousand dollars, Sherry, in in Please. complete streets um, money that we had, and I would say that the additions of the sidewalks that we had has been an overwhelming success to the community. We got another seventy one thousand dollars for uh, design for complete street out here. That will put us in school line. That will, huh? On school, school street. street. That will put us in line to get additional complete street. We're looking at the tip, the project up here of two point four, two point five million dollars. We've already invested um, two hundred fifty thousand, north, north of seventy thousand, north of two hundred. Those are big numbers that didn't have to come from town of Sunderland residents solely. So are, are we willing to suffer? to put that project two and a half million dollars and maybe 
potential other complete street projects at at risk right now out of, and, and they've already told us that they're not going to accept it so i just have a point of order let's say we agreed that we were going to go with the 10 foot and five foot which she says would be acceptable we still have to submit the 25 percent correct thing right so basically the stuff we do we already did that report is still has to go through cha and get submitted formally to correct. the dot right yep. mm -hmm. Scott. Oh, Sarah. Sorry, because I, I missed the meeting or two. Which is the, but I was here when the consultant Lou Rubito presented. Which is that? That's is his plan? Five. That's the his was the 10 and 5. 10 and 5. Okay. And five. Right. So that's one of the. There, that's the okay. And that was his recommendation. And that was the 11 and 4, as they said they still wanted the 5, right? Mm -hmm. Who said 11 and 4? I don't remember. That, that was, was the early, early on. It was, it was one very one. early on. And, but they said the horse needed to do the widening too. Yeah, you could act, you, instead of the 5 foot, you could ask for a design exception to the, to the 4 foot instead of the 5 foot. Um, for the, do we have any indication the that that's even for remotely acceptable? For the shoulders. I, I, I don't want, that seems to me the same issue as the 10 and 3. If they right. Are they going to accept it? Right. Why? Why? Why do something that they've already said no to? I mean, I'm, I'm confused. I think that's, I think that's, if I could, Liz, uh, Mr. Chair, that, that seems to be the crux of the, of the discussion tonight. Do we submit a design exception that we have guidance from the folks both at DOT as well as Complete Streets will likely um, not be approved? That's not to say that they will. I'm just saying that we've got them, again, here, 10 foot lanes five foot shoulders, sidewalks in the same location. That's from Kimberly Sloan, DOT. And under the complete streets, that is a design exception. Right. By itself. It seems like they're, it's, it seems to me that they're establishing a, a, a bottom line versus the standard design. We've pushed back against the standard design. And the feedback we're having as of 1017 is Okay, but ten, five, and five—that's where we're start. That's where we're starting our discussion from from our side, and with my DOT hat on. And you can keep the sidewalks in that location. Doesn't address your your real concerns, Dan. True. Well, except that you get the ten foot lane instead of the, an eleven or twelve. Yeah, it's narrower by almost three feet in general when you look at the total cross section. The, right. pave, the pavement goes off the pavement still grows but it doesn't grow to the point where if you use the standard design it would have grown two okay. and then the sidewalks stay where they're at and they're 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 in with in accordance with complete streets i'm not entirely sure anybody who's walked on uh south main or garage road understands just how nice those sidewalks can be at that space sarah's nodding she's got her eyes wide open like yeah <laughs> that's some real sidewalks but that said um i guess with respect to the design exception uh as prepared uh what what uh, has been a lot of work on uh, our core group's part how far off is this 10 5 and 5 from what we're actually asking for it's basically well half the project except except that the sidewalk there's no sidewalk proposed on the east side, mm -hmm. north of North Solar. Well, that, that's pretty much, there's right. no way to have the sidewalk on the east yeah, side. Yeah, I think right. we just have physical un limitations in that spot. Well, if, 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 we're in the same, if we're in the same ballpark, and I, I mean that with every bit of respect, if we're in the same ballpark, 10, 5, and 5, or 11, 4, and 4, we talked about 30 to 32 feet at some point right. in a totally public right. setting. Right, 30 to 32, we have what seems like green lighting from DOT for 30 feet. Now, I know the, the, the pavement surface on North Main grows in width. I understand that. But I also think that we have, I also feel that we've discussed a fair amount about some other measures of, of uh, the dampening piece, whether they're interactive signage yeah. with, with the, the radar pieces, whether it's uh, striping, which turns into a maintenance issue, frankly, but we'll own that for a long, long time. Uh, and the sidewalk feel uh, stays the same with the offset 
from the uh, road. So you have roadway, travel lane, car travel lane, bike travel lane, greenway, no shoulder, uh, rolled out shoulder, separation, and then the path for uh, walking and kids' bikes. Um, if that's if that's the case and there's consensus on it, I'd be happy to submit the design exception as it's presented. But I don't. I personally don't. I personally don't want to send in a design exception that we know is dead on arrival, just for the sake of going down with the ship. Right. Frankly. Because that that's not productive. Yeah, it doesn't get us anywhere. What it gets us is the DOT saying, "Fine, withdraw. Use Chapter 90 money." Right. And the Chapter 90 money doesn't get us anything under the under road infrastructure, which as a, as a member of the Board of Selectmen is critical in my mind for all of the other stuff that we see on pavement. We drive over so much more. Yeah. You don't, we, we yeah. oftentimes don't understand what's there until it's backed up in your basement. Yeah. Or, or it's stormwater that's pooling in your yard and undermining your found whatever, whatever it is. Well, I think those, yeah, poles, exactly. Well, you, you know, you live like three <laughs> poles away. You know, they're over here. There's a reason for that. I think that's really important to bear in mind. In terms of the report that you have in front of you, this I one. think that mm -hmm. design exception report. Yeah. Say October 9th. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. So I think the community stuff would say stay the same. Mm -hmm. You would the changes that would be made were, would be to the to the uh, tape width, to the shoulder yep. width, and to uh, I mean I think that once you have the shoulder width for bikes, then mm -hmm. a lot of the verbiage about the sidewalks is irrelevant. Because right. Well, I, and so there I, would be so it, it, whether it's us or CHA, someone would have to be made. sure. Right. And I think we know that most of the bikers, like the mostly diehard bikers along there, aren't going to use a shared use right. path for biking anyway. Sidewalk. Or sidewalk. Right. Sidewalk. They're going to use. They're going to use the road. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. As they were all weekend. <laughs> yes. So I guess one of my questions is as to Tom's 11 and 4 versus uh, their 10, 10, and 10 and 5. 5. Um, does 10 and 5 accomplish the traffic calming? What, or is there a safety issue with 11 and 4 that's worth pursuing? And what does that mean? I mean, sure. I, you know, again, I don't want to do more DOA um, right. recommendations. Do we have what? Do we know what, I, what I, I, roads are in, 10 in my opinion, okay. if you if you go ten and five, I I think the from what I know, if you put in six if you put in six inch lines instead of four inch lines, uh, and you and you narrow it down to the ten and four or ten and ten and five, I think you're going to get lower speeds. And if you go eleven and four with four inch lines, mm -hmm. I I but. You're talking about the, the the vehicle traffic now. Yeah, yeah. I, so you're, I, you're think, narrow, I think you I think right. you I think you slow right. the traffic. I think you throw the traffic down. My my problem is is that I I would say in the springtime and in the fall time when we have our our farm vehicles on Point. on the on the road. Point. I I think that. Many of them, many of them ex exceed that ten. And 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 I, you know, I, and it's funny because I was just driving down north to the well. I voted today because now early voting is open. So if you want to vote, because you may not be around on Tuesday, November sixth, you can go into the town clerk's office. It's kind of like absentee balloting, but not. Um, it's now perfectly, you can go tell the town clerk you want to vote and they will take your ballot and you can vote. It's, it's really easy, really. They have a little voting booth set up in the town clerk's office. It's really easy. But I was driving down tonight and there was a bicyclist and, and that I had a tape measure in the truck and I, because I'm a cautious driver, some people disagree with that, but <laughs> I she's not pulled, here. Yeah, was <laughs> I, I pulled I pulled I pulled around that person, um, and I and and I said, "What is this width of the with the road? You know what?" And 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 it's like maybe eleven, a little over a little eleven feet now, and I couldn't get by him without pulling into the other lane. 
I, I didn't think it was safe. I didn't think it was safe. To give yourself some safety, I agree. I right, but but if and 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 then I think of all the time that come down the road and 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 think about the people that don't show up or don't give way to the you know. I just don't feel that when we I I and I I listen when Peter. Um, talks about it and Gary they talk about it in our earlier conversations about safety of the bicycle the people and, and Peter saying that you know there's some people that are very comfortable riding on the road but there's just as many people that don't that are not comfortable with riding on the road so I, I don't know I, I just want I just want to I just want to make it very acutely aware that speed is a concern trust me on 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 our road i on 47 i understand that so tr and and actually on plum tree if somebody stands next to plum tree it's amazing yeah. how quick some people go oh, on yeah. plum tree road but tom to your point my problem is that if if you want to propose 11 and 4 and they haven't said it's okay why do you why do you want to do that oh be, because i i would I think, think that's a great point i i i if, when, when, when I was at the academy, when they told me to polish my shoes, I polished my shoes every day because I knew if I didn't polish my shoes, then I was going to get demerits, okay? So there's a rule that says when I drive, I like to stay between the fog line and the passing lane. And, and if, and if I, I think if you, if you make it the 10, if 10 and 5, I think the, you're, you made the, the, the thing so, so narrow that you, you're not giving... I think I would be either crossing the white line or the yellow line on a regular. I think 11 gives me a little bit more flexibility. Plus, um, I, I hate to see farm vehicles and other vehicles driving in <coughs> the bicycle lane. I, but I repeat the same question. If the state is willing to do 10 and 5, yeah, well, I, I, I would. you want to go down a dead end? I, I won't. <laughs> I, I, I won't. Okay. I, no, I you won't. You got to understand. I won't. I, that my, my personal... I guess what I was trying to say when I said 11 and 4 is that I'm saying I'm compromising to the to 10 and 5. I, I don't I, I I think they should have I think they should have more flexibility. I I struggle. Well, this whole I, I, but I, I, I struggle I struggle because I, I I know what you're saying. Did you read the we'll excerpt? From I know. Did you read the excerpt in there from their own manual about how it should and not that, be? And that's computer. why. And that's why it's so. That's why it's so hard for me. And and I had this discussion with Sherry today, and 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 Sherry, you know, Sherry's Sherry's an interesting. We've had all kinds of different town administrators, and, and Sherry. I was wondering and Sherry, where you're going. Sherry, <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, I see Sherry over there like Sherry's, Sherry, Sherry's a very, Sherry's a, um, is different than, and than Margaret and, and Dana and the other one because Sher, Sherry, I mean, if you're staying, uh, steering into danger, she'll say, you know, Tom, you're going to, you're going to run right into that rock. And, and, but she says it so nicely that, <laughs> that I would change direction because she asked me to do it very nicely. She didn't give me that nice thing. She says, you know, we are going to lose <laughs> yeah. all of this if we pursue, because, because I, I, and, 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 and she, she talks, she, 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 she's a the classic talk quietly but carry a big stick and I think she and I think she negotiates very she negotiates very I'm, I'm giving you a compliment I think Thank you. Um, there's still a rock but, involved but she, but, <laughs> somewhere there's a rock in this set yeah. but, but she but she she's very she's very she, she's very determined where she goes and, and she has a lot of conviction in what she says so she never feels the, the need to yell or scream or get excited but today, when she told me, she looked. She said, "We will lose this." They told me we will lose this, and and that that I I and 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 that and when she said it to me like that, and, and again, it's not in a threatening way or anything. She just said the matter a very matter of fact. You know, the state, the states. This what's the state saying now is that we're there. You're gonna make. You really have to make a decision. And 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 when she said it, made me really because I I understand what you're saying. I. And Dan will test. If you go back to our first conversation, the first thing we said, we, we don't want speed to increase. 
Well, we are looking aside from all this about putting up like the speed signs and some other things too. So, um, and I was thinking like of your example, like you know your concern with the width and everything. I, I'm hoping that at least with the five foot lanes, the biker has a little more wiggle room. You know, I mean, not that anybody ever veers out of the lane when they're posting to Facebook and driving along the road or anything, but, you know. Um, and there's that. And, and, I mean, you know, hopefully we look at, like, lane divert, you know, lane departure technology, stuff like that. Hopefully some of that stuff will help with that a little bit. But, I mean, I get your, I get the concern. I mean, but hopefully, I mean, maybe this one is at least the closest compromise that isn't going to get shot down where we can because we'll be rebuilding the sidewalks right so even though they maintain the same width i think you said that too you find a lot of them have been encroached upon over the years too right that have kind of well i mean there are down. some that they've snuck around and yeah, yeah so it's so. having something too yeah i so. mean maybe this is the best we can get out of the situation you know where we get some measure of traffic calming you know um and I mean, well, there are some pieces of equipment now that, like, you, at this point, they're taking up, I've driven by some in Hadley, where they take up both lanes, right. the entire road with, when they get those big harvesters. You know, and then you just have to wait, <laughs> you know? We just have to use traffic calming devices like Lincoln Avenue and Amherst. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, see, there you go. Those are traffic calming I remember devices. the first time I drove over that after they installed it. Like, just watch. <laughs> yes. Watch for this. Catch watch. a little air in your car. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's kind of reminds me of an old... Str I'm going to date myself here, but I was a kid when I watched it. The Streets of San Francisco. I see. Sort of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Bullet. Jeez, I never watched that show, dude. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> but... So we have we have a couple. If I could, Mr. Chair, we have a couple of justifications for design exception in the document presented. I totally understand it. Uh, one of them is two five foot wide single direction shared use sidewalk paths proposed on both sides of the roadway within the village section, right? Yeah. And then three foot wide uncurbed shoulders along the sides of the roads. That's one. Alternate one here is being asked for three foot shoulders on each side of the road provide dedicated space for cyclists. Under this alternate, an eight-foot two-directional western roadway. I want to make sure if we're going to decide that what. Well, they're rejected. just doing a discussion of this. I, 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 what's been rejected. Yeah, yeah understood. Yeah. Right. And the second alternative, considering it was maintaining the general roadway alignment, current proposed, is that then we talk about some X's that need to be laid out, both with costs. So what's 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 the actual end? What's what's the goal that we put forward for design exception? Do we put forward a design exception with this backing documentation that calls out for the bicycle accommodations, pedestrian requirements? And in that recommendation and summary, what are we actually going to ask CHA to submit to? Yeah. What do we want? There's now the sidewalk is not that if you're going right. with a five foot bike lane, then you can drop all the verbiage about yep. so the sidewalk sidewalk stay. And the one, one it doesn't, they don't have to be single direction. That's just. They're just five foot sidewalks that's Got it. accepted yep. under right. under the guideline. Yep. Yeah. So now your only exception is that really the ten foot lane. Right. Got it. Right. Thank you. Is that right, Dan? I think so. I think yeah. I, I think they might want you. They probably want you on thirty two. The same that they're giving us thirty. Right. The exception is thirty. Thirty. Yeah. As opposed so to right. So it's, a, it's So I think that second section needs to be revised. The mm -hmm. front section is really just a justification. Yep. Yep. for why the sidewalk should stay where they are they are correct and 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 the community support for traffic calming in general totally get it that's got to be incorporated into into it the summary as well as the documentation the historic register piece the public outreach all the data crash data speed data that's all really important i, I, I really value all the work that's mm -hmm. gone into it the reality is we also have to define what we're asking for and so we're asking for, I think, is something in concert with what, uh, there's so many versions. You have to, if, forgive me. It's like alphabet soup. <laughs> no. um, we're, we're getting pretty close to what Lou Rubido, I think his third, his third or his second, yeah. whichever one it was. Lou's right. plan. Okay. Move forward to ask for the exception based on uh, 10 foot travel lanes, five foot bikes incorporate the documentation from 
the ad hoc group that's been working really diligently on this and see if we can't get this design exception uh, through the DOT for North Main Street. I'll second it. I, I also like to add that um, if we could, Mr. Scott and Dave. It's just a motion in a second. Yep. yep. To, to include in the motion that um, uh, regardless of the bike accommodations, five foot, whatever, five foot, four foot, whatever, that uh, traffic calming measures such as gateway, land, island treatment, speed yep. feedback signs, and perhaps others be incorporated in the project. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. Right. Yep. I, I like to, I like to make that a strong strong part of the uh, absolutely right uh, as well. In, yeah. in, include that as a modification to the original motion. Okay. Because that's one of our primary goals out of this too. How we started to get that. I I think I think that's we we have a we have a we have a chance that way. But right. And I noticed I was doing some of the re looking at some of the the speed signs. They also collect data. I know we occasionally have those speed checks that yeah. they do, but those speed signs can actually store and collect a lot of useful information. But not photographs, right? <laughs> no, oh, actually, like no, some of them do. No. Well, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, it, it, at least just if we can catch numbers and just, you know, now I know you got to be careful because that could work against lowering speed limits because like, well, you know, the, it was at the 80th percentile is going 75 miles an hour or so, you know, but it so that's, that's the kind of motion that we need to make, mm -hmm. Karen. Yep. All right, y'all set? I am. I'm ready there. to vote. Yep. All those in favor of the uh, the motion as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. We'll, we'll see where we go. Thank you. Good yes, sir. Appreciate it. So, so, um, having the sidewalk on only one side north of um, North Silver so, is that a, an exception as well? Yes. Yep. Is that included in the? Report? That's what we're going to put forward, yeah. Yeah. And did you want to also have like crosswalks? There's crosswalks. There are going to be yeah. There'll be one at that point to get from the one side to the other. There's going to be one near one twenty. One twenty. Yep. And then I think three. I want to say right. Yeah, and they're going to take care of that. The they're going to take care of that. They will no longer have a Y. North Main Street coming onto Main and Street. T. Yeah, from North Silver. T. Okay. Thank Thanks you so much, everyone. Steven, do you want to talk to us? Uh, no, no I, I was here to see Sherry, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for keeping it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that the, the board voted to. Uh, Approve a change request. I mean, uh, requested by Sugarbush. Mm -hmm. They are dividing the existing parcel. The, the parcel is about sixty some odd acres now. They are dividing that into two. Mm -hmm. uh, that their request was to, to divide it into two to cut off the. <coughs> Potential municipal water supply, or that they're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, from the parcel that houses the 150-unit apartment complex, and uh, they, they submitted a request to call that an insubstantial change because the comprehensive permit has already been issued, and the board met on Thursday and uh, voted to. Uh, that voted that it was an insubstantial change, and we, uh, as a result of that, we had to modify some conditions of the, the 38 conditions of the uh, original, what I call it settlement <laughs> agreement, right. and uh, to allow that parcel development, and it also addressed some uh, access for recreational use. And, um, so, the the board voted to uh, amend that uh, on Thursday. So, so Steve, you, you said that they want a, a public water supply for the project. Well, now they they don't need it. They, they, they don't need yeah, it. Uh, 
they, uh, Nielsen feels, or I guess they feel that uh, the, the parcel has an, uh, a, a location that's an excellent source for, for water. That, yeah. You know, initially it was going to be used for the project. Right. And then the town, uh, the water district came in and said, well, we can supply the water for, uh, for the project. They don't need it anymore. But uh, they, they figure that uh, it may be of use. I, I think they've talked to the water district about getting water out of that, that, that source and also to... Oh, quid pro quo. Uh, <laughs> uh, and also to, uh, you know, maybe Amherst and or Hadley or other, I mean... They, but, what, but doesn't, and, and a, just wondering, wasn't there, wasn't, isn't there a monetary component of the project that would change because now they separated, yeah. now they separated that, they separated the potential water off, off that parcel, so. There's, well, huh. one of the conditions, actually a condition that we added. How, how long before they can sell it to, you know, LLC, corporate, uh, whoever? They can sell, well, I mean, it, it has to be to a, uh, I'm reading the exact language. Uh, hmm. Conveyance, uh, this is one of the conditions that gets modified. Part B, uh, I mean, the, 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 let me start by saying that the, uh, the settlement agreement allowed for having a potential municipal water supply on that site, yep. along with the 150 apartments. Correct. By dividing it, uh, it just makes it, makes it a little cleaner. The conveyance of the water, water source resource lot, that's what this thing's been dubbed, the, the part that has the, the water well on it. If it occurs, will allow the water resource entity to install water wells in the water resource lot and related pipes, equipment, pumps, and apertures necessary to utilize such water as a public water supply for the municipality or municipalities and or other entities involved uh, for the public water system. Uh, there is a further thing that says, should the applicant sell or lease the water resource lot as described above, any income generated thereby shall be considered in the calculation of the applicant's limited dividend in accordance with Chapter 40B, Sections 20 through 23. So uh, if they do, I mean, they're just dividing it right now. Mm -hmm. If they actually end up selling it mm -hmm. to the town, or selling it to, I guess they could sell it to Amherst or sell it to, to another municipality uh, or another nonprofit entity, uh, the proceeds of that would factor into the financials that went into the apartments. You know, yep. the whole calculation for qualifying as a 40B. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Stephen, I just, before I go, before I ever say another word, I want to thank you and the Stony Board for your work because I, I truly understand that what you guys are doing now is all because it's being forced upon you. But I, I, I would just like to commend you and the members of the board for being good stewards to the town and, and to the town residents. I, I, think, I think you guys did it with uh, an honorable intent. Um, with honest questions that have never to, I don't believe to this day have been answered sufficiently. And I, I just, and, and, and I just, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank you guys. And I know that's why you didn't come tonight, but I just want to make sure you, you understood and I hope you relate to your, the members I, of your board. I, I, well, and, and my, my board members, you know, uh, have, have really been, uh, and, and Jay Tolleran, and Peter Freeman, who was the attorney for Sugarbush, worked on this amendment, you know, incorporating the uh, in insubstantial change. And uh, my guys 
uh, you know, specifically uh, Stewart and Jim Bernonis pushed back on some issues, and we actually modified some of their language uh, to, you know, to ensure that uh, it, it is open for open recreation for the members of the 40B project. I mean, it's a landlocked parcel, so it's not going to be like for the general public. Right. But uh, you know, so and they, they were certainly looking after. And, and I think in general, I think the, the board has really been trying to Look, I, I, get the I, best I, deal for the town or at least see that the town's interests are noted. I, and I, we're, 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 the town is just so lucky to have volunteers like the members of your, you and your committee that, that devote so much time to make, make things right. And, um, and it's one of, the, one of the small things that... Um, it's actually a large thing that 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 transpires on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. That you guys help make this town run. And I just want to say thank you. Oh, I, I appreciate that, and you know, a lot's happening here because he's. I know. I mean, the the settlement agreement laid out a roadmap for him to build his project, and there's 38 conditions and a lot of stuff he's going to do, and uh, he's ticking them off. Uh, so, I mean. You got to follow. Yeah, we have to follow the court. We have courts, and they have laws, and yeah. we have to abide by our courts and the laws. And I mean, we know. But we know. It is what it is. It is. But I, we appreciate what you do, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stevie. Okay. All right, Scotty. We all set. We all, all set. we all set with that uh, thing with the road. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I, I guess I guess it's it's sometimes I I, I don't. I don't speak, uh, I try to speak clearly, but I, what I was trying to tell Liz and, and everyone is that unfortunately there's a lot of compromises that have to be made by all of us. And, and I do appreciate the counsel that you gave tonight, Sherry. I, I mean, it, it, it's strong counsel coming from you. And I, I, and I appreciate it, thank you. Okay. Uh, appointment selectman representative Frontier Union 38 contract negotiations. I think that meeting's coming up, right? There's a meeting come on, coming up, and um, there's three or four. Three or four interested parties. That so. are interested, so if the ones that are interested right. can go to the meeting. Right. So, Scott, you said you would be willing to do that? Right. I'll attend that meeting. David, is that okay with you? Yeah. Motion mm -hmm. then? Uh, motion. Motion, Scott Bergeron. And seconded by myself. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, letter from Peter Lacey, recommended appointment of cultural council. Mr. Scott, want to read that, please? I will get to it here. Uh, dear Scott, Dave, and Tom, I would like to ask the select board uh, approve the appointment of the following two members of the Sunderland community to the Sunderland Cultural Council, Beth Roberge Friedrich. And Vrishali Javeri, don't hold it against me. <laughs> Pretty sure that's it. Both women have expressed an interest in serving on this co important community, on this important committee. No, it says community, sorry. Committee, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. that, as indicated by the attached letters. Please let me know if and when this request has been acted upon and or any additional steps you need from me in order to fulfill it. Respectfully, Peter Lacey. And we have attachment from each. That said, uh, move to appoint as requested. That would be Miss Vrishali Javeri, or Javeri, probably a hard J, Javeri, and uh, Beth, Beth uh, Robert Friedrichs. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor of the appointment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. And um, Scott, the uh, one of your members is actually a uh, is a brand new resident. Nice. Mm -hmm. Love of it. the United States of America. Love they it. just became they just became citizens in I believe in July. So I'm very proud to appoint on the committee 
um, they've um, they've taken a very active interest in their community mm -hmm. um, and the electoral processes. I, I I mean I you know I people say what they want, but I I just think you know people to come that come to this country that are willing to give up like my great grandmother and her family and. They came to this country. They gave everything up they had to come here, and now they become active members of our community. I just salute them, and and it what really makes our country great, I think. Mm -hmm. um, sewer rate and warrant for the collection of sewer use taxes, FY19 sewer rate. Sherry, um, you have before you the sewer commitment for three hundred and seventy-four thousand two hundred and thirty-two dollars and forty-eight cents. Uh, that will make a fiscal year 19 sewer rate of $296.07. That is an increase of $3.82 over last year's rate, which was uh, $292.25. And does this, if I could, Mr. Chair, does this uh, include the escalation yes. as part of the contract? Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks so much, Chair. And the debt, the sewer debt. Debt as well. Yep. yep. Uh, move to adopt the move to adopt the sewer. Hang on, let me get this right now because we've stopped. We've adopted the sewer budget. This is nineteen. No, 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 no. Two thousand fiscal year two thousand nineteen sewer. I'm going to put on my silly hat right now and go. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> we just appropriated a town meeting the two thousand nineteen sewer budget. Right. Right. This has been done at town meeting already. The appropriation exists. Yeah. You, no. You're just setting the. You're setting the rate. Setting the rate. Got it. So the rate uh, is set based on three seven four two three two point four eight spread equally across the users. I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It seems to me that we're about a half a year out of uh, yeah. sync with uh, it. But it's, it's when the they send out the sewer bill. I get it. I get it. It's, 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 part, it's part of the sewer bill. We right. bill on, this, on the fiscal year, but Got it's it. based on yep. a calendar yep. year, yep. so it gets a little wonky. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, exactly and, right. And, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, just like whatever. Yeah. No, I don't completely understand. It seemed like uh, a, second, a second vote on, on developing of the budget for this, the sewer system. That said. Um, appointment of selectman representative. Franklin, I don't think any of us are interested, no. are they? No. I don't think we're any interested at this time. And and I question how Frontier is doing it this year, but it is a little different this yeah. year. Well, I, I when I when I read the, the, the law, the law says one thing, but mm -hmm. I'm, greater minds than ours will figure it out. Correct. Um any selectman updates? Uh if I could, Mr. Chair, do we have a uh, capital team meeting tomorrow night. This is downstairs, uh, 6 p.m., and we're going to review the second draft, the second submittal of the buildings assessment. Oh, good. <coughs> I'm going to sneeze. Um, we're missing some components still based on the original RFQ, but there is a lot of information, 200 and 54 pages worth of building assessment for us to begin to noodle over and I think it's been very <coughs> Been very good. So I'm happy to get that group back together and uh, begin this process so, Baby, I don't get this one. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yep um, For me we had the uh, I went to the cog meeting the other night um, the cog we, we're going to start seeing changes in the radio system yep. that our fire, police, um, EMS use. They're, right now they're trying to hire they're trying to hire a manager of it, someone that understands radios. Mm -hmm. and I, I, so they really ha it's kind of be like a part time, full time. Um, they put out an RFP. They're looking for someone. They haven't been able. So um, I suggested that they contact the Franklin County Ham Association. I mean, mm -hmm. they may have a retired person that, or someone that's newly about to retire mm -hmm. that may be interested in doing that. So they're going to look. At, they're going to look into that. But 
we're going to start seeing a cost um, to do that. But I, I think they, we have to, we have to make some because it's five to eight million dollars worth of infrastructure for the radios. Yeah, it's less than a decade since that chain's gone on. It's about a decade. Yep. You're right, Scott. Yep. Absolutely. So they're they're work they're working on that. That that seems to be and and actually I think Bobby Ahern when he was fire chief was talking about that and I think Stephen mm-hmm. Benj- Chief Benjamin has yep. been taught mention about that and Chief uh, Eric Demetropolis. So it's and I know in our. Um, South County EMS, we talk about it with the Zach, the director over there. So um, I think it's something that we have to be looking forward to next yeah. coming up. It is it either we're going to go with the state police or do our. It's, so it's it's some. I, I see changes are going to happen. Mm, nice. Um, other things is that, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, the voting. Um, we now have early voting. Early voting started today. If um, you, it's not like an absentee ballot, so you can be in town that day now. But if you just want to vote now, you can go in and talk to the town clerk, and you can vote. Same process. You go in, you announce who you are, your address. They give you a, a form. You open it up. You go in the, the voting booth. You make your vote. Put it in. Seal it. You give it to them. Um, and and then you're you're you voted. So I did that today. Um, it worked. It worked. It was easy process. Stephen, just, uh, just uh, do you know is, it, is that considered a provisional vote? No. Or, or does, so it will be right. counted yep. on. Oh it's yeah, it's brand new, it, and and in the state of Massachusetts, I don't think we we have in Massachusetts we haven't been able to do it before. Right. I think in some states they have done it before. Right. Um, so it's brand new. So it's your, it's your regular ballot. It'll, it'll it's a regular ballot that they when it's done they'll take the ballot out and put it into the machine and the, the machine will tally it. Right. So it's, it's the same. It's not a provisional. It's and 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 actually it's a kind of a great idea if if you if you're not sure about your voting status, you can go in to do go in to vote now. Right. And if there's a problem, you have time to correct it before. Correct. Good point. Because some people that may think they're registered in Sunderland, but they're not. So, because a lot of things happen now through uh, the RMV, RMV. RMV, right? So, so you, so it's actually a very, it's it's an easy way to do it. Um, also, I would just like to talk about um, our the electrical aggregate um, a little bit. Mm-hmm. The the city of Gloucester is going through it right now and and I just have been getting in the thing mail because of my job we have a piece of property in Gloucester and and in Gloucester um, National Grid um, is their default right now and National Grid's price I believe is 13 seven point one three seven cents per kilowatt hour in Gloucester, they they're offering their residents, and and I think this is one of the things that that hasn't been totally explained. But in Gloucester, they're giving their their um, residents three options. Their their default would be a five uh, percent local renewable resources, and the rate is eleven point eleven oh eight five. So they're saving. Okay. Yeah. About just short of two. Two and a half? Just short of two. Just short of two. And that's that's with using 5% local renewables. Um, They have another option of no renewables, and they have a price of 0.1098. So they're almost saving the rate payers almost three Three full cents. Almost three full cents a kilowatt. Yep. you can opt into that that program that they're offering, and they also offer a 100% renewable. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the value for that um, right now, but those are some of the, hmm. the savings that they're passing on. So they're taking their plan, if I could, Mr. Chair. It's been a, the plan. The plan has been approved by the DPU. Yep. And the actual kind of mutual fund of electricity, I think, is described. Yeah. Comes for the city of Gloucester in, in three tiers. 
they're they're they're, they're offering, offering three choices. They're offering three choices. Got it. Okay. They have the, the but only one of those options is opt in. Right. I mean, so they're, they're going to put if you don't if you don't opt out, they're going to put you into the five percent renewable. Got it. Local. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. But you could also choose a hundred percent renewable. Got it. Or the no renewable best rate. And so, did you have to research this, or you as a your 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 business or your, your institution? My employment. Yeah. Your employment got notice. Did we got notice? Got it. So we got no, we got we got we got a little we got a we got a yeah, card that's part of, right. we got a card we got a card. Uh, uh, a card yep. in the mail of, of actually a big postcard. Um, actually, I got two, uh, two big <laughs> postcards, and two and they gave and they gave and they gave a they gave the website to go mm -hmm. to the Gloucester has www dot hmm. um, Gloucester dash C E B I think or something like that, and you can go to their web page and explains the process mm -hmm. about how how it came about, cool. um, and it shows and explains the three different plans that they're off hmm. offering. So and, and, and a fourth option is to simply not participate, right? You can, you can stay with you National can, Grid you if you want. Right. That, that's the point where the decision's made. You just go, well, I don't want to participate in this at all. Correct. And that's still a choice. Correct. Well, and, and interesting enough, that each individual within that can choose. So it's not like um, you're still getting, you're getting multiple choices. Well, that's, that's what I was asking, Dave. You're not getting yeah. one choice. You're right. not saying this is the plan or you stay with who you've got. We have three, the city of Gloucester, not saying that we have, we haven't seen the plan yet, right. has three choices they're affording. So Correct. That, that's actually pretty good. And mm -hmm. Well, I never thought, I never, I, I, I wanted to mention it. Yeah, smart. Because yeah, I don't know when the plans are going to come up, when, whenever we start talking about plans. Correct. But Mr. Bergeron has said, we may get to the point where we have the DPU hearings and everything, and we may not, we may decide right. we're not given a good enough plan, we may... Not act on it. No. Now, now the other thing is that it's a three-year that there is a three-year commitment. Got it. Yep. So when they when they if you sign you know if you choose not to opt out, mm -hmm. it's three years. Got yeah. it. Yeah, and I, I get the mechanics of that. I believe I was surprised to learn that they have choices. They got three choices in Gloucester in Gloucester's yeah. plan. Right, because I thought it was you know. Well, it's an the default out or mm -hmm. that, that raises choice. that raises that raises a fine discussion point as mm -hmm. we go forward with the public comment about well, what is it where our goals are? Correct. Right, because then you, that gets into the plan. But but you can have multiple goals. Correct. Right. You can Which have is, you can you can talk know. about just giving the best price to the yep. residents, yep. or you could have a green offering. Right. Or, or mix, but right. you you could potentially put that in your yeah. in your. Yep. That makes perfect sense. And even what? that five percent is saving a little bit too. So that kind of mm -hmm. straddles the two ends of it. Yeah. But but if you want to see how it's how it's done in Gloucester, I would recommend that you you Google search or Check Bing, whoever you want to use, go to Gloucester uh, Electrical Aggregate, yep. type that in, and 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 you can access their the plan cool. and see what they're doing. But uh, but it never had been presented to us like that. I agree with that. Yeah, I, that's I the first that I've heard of that as an option. So it makes it even more interesting. Well, you know, just just because we sit at this table and get those presentations from, the, in this case here, the uh, uh, consultant cool. doing the aggregation, doesn't mean we can't push back and say, well, wait a minute, we'd like right. to think about this and, and exactly. seeing the opportunity, Tom, as, as yeah, you, you given structure the, the program, it's your design. Correct. Just yeah, so that's interesting. That's great stuff. But mm. and, you, and they tell us that, mm -hmm. but until you see somebody else doing How it, how they're doing it, yeah, right. right. And, and plus, if you can respond now by Going out to a website, let's face it, it's a lot easier than mm -hmm. having to mail an envelope and put postage on it. It's, you know, two seconds and you're, you when know, when When we, done. ancient history now, but when we first negotiated our first contract with Comcast, um, the things that we were asking for back in that first contract never happened. Right. Total build out, some capital work. Yeah, totally get it. They were, it right, but and and you couldn't compare. Work. You couldn't compare prices to what other. You yeah. know, you couldn't you couldn't negotiate price and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But there was a lot of things that we learned in that negotiation. Right. Uh, we had some really smart people that were working, mm -hmm. and, and and that could see that that had a vision. Mm -hmm. Bill Whitmore. Yep, I was going to um, say Bill Whitmore. Mark Mark Gilmore. Mm -hmm. That that had a vision. Yep. Um, and others. And, and they had a they and and so so I guess this is it's interesting because it 
maybe more it's more than what maybe what originally yeah, thought. thought yeah that's okay. good that's good stuff that's it sherry you had one to add anything or you had enough um <laughs> just uh, so we did get the community compact grant for it yeah, for thirty-one thousand, um, so uh, that's for server implementation. So, so, so I, I don't want to skip over this. Okay? You keep a running tally of them. Just, yeah. just, <laughs> just last, just last week, okay. Just Big last week. week. Can we talk about one of them yet? Yeah, we can yes. talk about both now. Yeah. It, they, okay. But they've been, been really so we were embargoed. <laughs> we, embar we were embargoed from talking about about grants that we knew we were getting but that happens all Gag the time plus it is an election year yeah. but just yeah. last week sherry was able to secure us seventy one thousand dollars for a complete street study that was in the newspaper about about um, it was and yeah. it was interesting because someone said to me oh you got seventy one thousand dollars for a manhole no. yeah. <laughs> and and I'm like, wait 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 the article oh, it's, it's the best manhole the ever that's right <laughs> <laughs> um but but basically, it, it's money to, to start planning along School Street. So it's designed for School like Street for traffic calming, ADA pr improvements in pedestrian safety, right. and um, design and construction of a manhole. So. Right. Now, this is, it's huge because now it, it puts us in line for complete street money to actually, actually get it designed. We, we can go, and this is like a first step into... Um, getting money to do a complete street on and which will tie into the new park and everything and the boat lawn senior housing and and, senior and, and housing. it's a it's a huge thing so i don't want to undersell it but it's seventy one thousand dollars that the town doesn't have to put up with mm -hmm. the second the grant that sherry just talked about was thirty one thousand dollars and that that we, we have um people may not recognize but um Technology is changing very rapidly, and, it, and it's been very—it's very difficult for us to stay abreast of, of what's happening. But between that thirty-one thousand dollars that Sherry just mentioned and the twenty thousand dollars that we put that we um, put up early earlier at town meeting, that fifty-one thousand dollars will be able to replace our servers, back uh, up an antivirus. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it help with some some of the, uh, the equipment that components that we have also, so it, it it'll get us it'll get us um, upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we leverage us some money from the town twenty thousand yep, dollars. We leverage that twenty thousand to be able to get a thirty one thousand dollar grant. So between the two, we get fifty one thousand um, dollars that we're going to be able to help that will help not have taxpayers pay the whole right. $51,000 themselves. It's it's good great news. Yeah. It's great news. Thank you, Sherry. So so last week last week and and I I know we repeat, but just last week we brought 100,000 Sherry has helped bring another $100,000 to the town of Sunderland. That's good stuff. Yep. That's good stuff. All right, anything else? It's good to end on good stuff, huh? It that is. Yeah, it is. Don't often good. get to do that. CB? Um just one thing I want, I, I should bring up, and I think you're probably aware of, uh, Sherry did a great job on that local preference. Uh, you know, we, we had, to, one of the one of the conditions that Nielsen had to do that it was the you know, part of our local preference for Sugarbush. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sherry drafted up a, a, a letter uh, that, that was, you know, that towards that and uh, uh, Jay was impressed with it and he, he, he made some additions so I think we really had a fine letter there and I want to thank Sherry for, for, for doing that for uh, you know, getting us maybe up to a 70% local preference for the affordable units that will be in this uh, sugar project. That's good. 26 Thanks. units for 26. 26, 26 units. For we, had to, we had to round it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked you rounded down dealing with Nielsen. Well, it has nothing to do with Nielsen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I understand. Yeah. So. And thank you, Steve. Share anything have, else? Is that one more? I have oh, one more. Go ahead. Another question that's not related at all. Okay. It's related to one of my pet peeves, and maybe you're going to tell me that you can't deal with it or talk about it, or I might have to write a letter or something. Um, at, 
the, the intersection of Swampfield Drive and Old Amherst Road, you know, mm -hmm. the school entrance, mm -hmm. uh, there used to be a light. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that illuminated the, the intersection, and it was extremely bright, and mm -hmm. uh, it it was taped. Uh, I just think, and this is being uh, that intersection is a pretty important intersection, and it won't be long that it will be getting dark at 4:30 when you know you know come from the depths of winter. And but, you know, there's, there's still school activities going on at at at, at, at our. At our uh, I, I would like to see a light there, and I think it should be a a, a different style of light. I mean, really, that light that was there. I mean, literally, I I took a newspaper and across the street on my property, and, and it didn't bother me because it didn't shine into my bedroom or anything like that. I could read the paper. I mean, it was a. I mean, those those LED lights are phenomenally bright. I agree. Uh, and, and going down. Uh, what, what Point, CB. Um, Scott, you want to want to comment on that? Uh, I think that the fixtures that were put in for the sake of gaining efficiency at the elementary school, both exterior and interior, did core corruption to the basic design. Had very poor thought and were only driven by saving money. The quality of the light is absolutely awful compared to what was put there originally with a very high cutoff and the Friendly Skies program from the Night Skies program. And the people who went about approving that should not be, have their job right now. I would just say anything else? Do you have an opinion, Scott? No. Can we change it under so our I, th I think he's what he, I think what he's I think I think what he's saying is he agrees with you. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, terrible. And well, so and so and so the solution was since we really wanted to light up the neighbor's house, we're just going to remove it. Well, that's nice, but you didn't do anything for all the other fixtures, interior and exterior. Anybody who's been in the gym at the excuse me in the cafeteria at the elementary school knows it simply looks up and recognizes the fact that it's warehouse lighting. Plain and simple, cheap to operate. The original fixtures that were there and in the library were part of a general aesthetic. It's nice that we can throw out good design for chasing saving dollars. There was another way of doing that, and the people who executed that project should not have their jobs right now. So I think I think what we're going to do okay. is is when when we get done. We're, we're starting the uh, process now, right? Yeah, they're in the oh, design the process. Of street lights. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they're actually, we're actually going to be looking at replacing the street lights now that we, we own them. Mm -hmm. And we, we agreed to buying a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking at the photometrics. Correct. We will start looking at the photometrics Correct. of those lights, which shows us how they actually shine on the road, Correct. which you were probably striving for originally. Correct. And, and I would say, typically, fixtures are inex more or less inexpensive today. Correct. And we'll probably, if we're smart, we'll probably go readdress those fixtures along the highway. Along the Swampfield Drive. Oh, yeah, along yeah. Swampfield Swamp I mean, Drive. Clearly yeah. overkill and, <laughs> but, yeah. That, that, that would be a bane in Mr. Bergeron's I think existence it, since it's been there. Yeah. I mean, since we did, you know, the safety modifications to the you know, the, the sidewalk and the intersection mm -hmm. and... Right. It's all part of the big picture. Correct. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's just, it's just yeah. I mean, there was a light there before. There was. And, and uh, you know, it just... It just yes. it, You're throwing Mr. Bergeron softballs right I now. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it's bothered him, it's bothered him <laughs> since. It's bothered him. I, I can remember when they first went in. Correct. Right? Correct. And I don't think we disagree with that. There should be a light at the end of the road. I agree. Not at all. Where people yeah. are crossing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Critical we'll try. Spot. We'll try to work on that. Okay. It was just since I was here. Probably the wires are still on the ground. They probably just ripped it out, huh? I just capped it. Yeah. Oh, the uh, pole's still there. The pole. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the pole's still there. They just, they just took the fixture. We can buy a can fixture. Can you give me that pole number, Steve, mm -hmm. when you have a chance, right? so mm -hmm. I can? It's it's not a. It doesn't have a number. Oh, it does. It's like it's one of the It's part of the. It's part of the original construction of this school. Oh, okay. Yeah.
we can get a fixture and put a fixture up there. Maybe yeah, we can. We maybe can. we can light the way to doing yeah. it correctly. <laughs> and that, that one, unlike the other lights, you know, should probably be on 24 hours rather than some. Of the, <clears throat> the other ones are, are trip lights. Yeah, they're yes. occupancy sensors, but it saves money. Yeah. No, no, actually, it doesn't. No, well, that's true. Because they don't. The city of Cambridge is fighting right now, but okay. right now the uh, utility company just figure out how how many hours of darkness there are, and they. Mm -hmm. So you're going to pay. You, yeah, they don't meter. They won't meter the poles. All all the light fixtures have meters in. So there's not a meter on it. So you no, there is on Swampville Drive. All that is fed from the school. That's all from the elementary school. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. They're all on the meter. Oh, for all on the meter. Yep. Oh, so, yeah, so, we, we're, so we, we can save money. We can save money. So even if we even if we dropped them down to fifty percent. Correct. Right. We'd save money. Yeah. Or put the appropriate shades and cutoffs on them. Right. And That's the quality the, of light would look good again, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know the. Green monster. I mean, being on the on the intersection there, I would Correct. just just be on all the time. Got it, huh, Scotty? Mm -hmm. Or at least like dust to dawn or something. See, we'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us. I'm all set. Uh, just one thing. Uh, you want, want to keep thank, going, you want to keep going. Always no, I want to thank um, Sherry, Amherst really. DPW for okay. coming out and assisting us with uh, street lights. They'll Which be ones? out again on uh, Wednesday. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, all the street lights are burning out, so they did assist us with the ones on 116. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there were to, two on 116. That one's uh, going to be fixed on Wednesday. Mm. Okay. Uh, but we had two before that, so the one by Cliffside will be done on Wednesday. Okay. Um, and there's one on the corner. So how how quick, how quick is uh, the LED the conversion happening? Yeah, how how quick is the? Uh, it's scheduled for November 20th through December 21st. So we should be seeing the photometrics pretty soon. Yeah, they did today. submit some yeah. stuff today. Did yeah. so you start looking at them? I started looking at them today. Okay, yeah. I'll run up through the software and see what makes sense. So if it, if it, the meter, we could replace all those meters, go, all those light fixtures going down to the school. And throw the uh, the smart sensor on top of them, and we could we could do a number mm -hmm. on there, couldn't we? Right. And you could program them. Mm -hmm. There those, is. So they have that seven pin connector. Yeah. Those those fixtures that are there right now don't even get me started. Anyway, <laughs> those <laughs> fixtures. He can make some yeah, improvements. Well. All right. Motion. Uh, uh, motion, motion to adjourn. We have a second by Dave Pierce because I know he was going to second. All those in favor, yep. signify by saying aye. Aye. 3-0 declares out at, oh, 8.45, almost a Scott Bergeron meeting. Thanks, Pat. <laughs>